and good morning, folks. Hi, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Tesla mobile connectors. Um, what I wanted to do is just kind of, there's been a lot of talk between our users, uh, between what's the difference between the Generation 1 and Generation 2 mobile connector. Um, and so what I wanted to do was just basically kind of cover some of the similarities, uh, as well as some of the obvious differences between the two. Uh, but most importantly, go into sort of the technology behind the two uh, and, and show you the difference between um, both of these units, uh, very well built units. Now the Tesla mobile connector is the actual charging cable that comes with the Tesla uh, that that, uh, that you purchase. Now um, your generation one uh, Tesla mobile connector will come with all Teslas from 2012 to 2017. It's generally just a, a Model S and X. Uh, the generation two Tesla mobile connector will come with all Model 3s but also every single Tesla um, that was built between January 2018 and so on. So all Model 3s and January 18 so on for the Model S and X. Um, and so that's where we wanted to start uh, with the presentation. Now I'll first kind of go over some of the similarities between the two. Now you notice that, uh, for instance, the connectors, um, you know, that's just kind of a given. Um, both of them will have the standard Tesla connector uh, to plug into the, 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 the charging inlet. Um, so that's, that's really convenient. Uh, as far as the transformer goes, um, both of them have a, you know, kind of a relatively uh, similar looking transformer. Um, they both have the status indicator lights here um, with the Tesla. Um, you'll see the Generation 1, it's, uh, it's, it's a little heavier, um, but it is uh, a little more curvy as opposed to the Generation 2. Um, pretty much both of them are the same dimensions, 7 uh, inches by 3.5. Um, so uh, overall, that is very similar in their design. Uh, as far as the cabling goes, you'll see uh, they both have a 20 foot cable uh, for your for your usage. Now, if you go to, if you kind of need more than 20 feet of cable uh, for your charging, you may want to kind of rethink how you're parking the car, where you're parking the car, um, relative to where your actual outlet is that you're going to be plugging in these mobile connectors for your charging source. We always like to design our our, our setup. Um, to where, you know, based on how you park, where you park, you're just parking, getting out of your car, walking to the back, plugging in. You really don't even feel yourself doing it. Um, so that's one of the things you want to consider um, when setting up your charging. But for the most part, 20 foot cable on both of them. Um, they'll both come with a J1772 connector here. Now this connector here allows you to actually use all of the uh, universal chargers out in the wild. Um, so Tesla will, you'll be able to use all of Tesla charging stations, but um, with this adapter, you'll be able to plug uh, the universal uh, end here and then plug that into your Tesla. Um, and so this is one of the more valuable adapters that comes with uh, these two particular mobile connector packages. And as far as the, the differences between the two, uh, uh, apart from the obvious uh, on the packaging lines, the Generation 1 came with kind of a round uh, package here. It's got a little cargo netting uh, there. Um, so, uh, you know, kind of a round package here. Generation 2 came with uh, more of a square uh, package here. Um, really you know, kind of basic, but uh, just think uh, round package, Generation 1, square package, Generation 2. The handles wise and the, the handle configuration, you'll see uh, the Generation 1 uh, handle, uh, it, it's kind of a shinier, almost stainless steel metal. Uh, that's on here, uh, and the Generation 2 uh, package here, um, it's very very sleek, uh, but it's a hardened plastic right here, which is really nice uh, for the touch. Uh, now, of course, Tesla in their Generation 1 model, uh, they did have a few uh, overheating issues with regards to that stainless steel uh, application, um, but you know, they, they just decided to go with a, a nice, sturdier, harder plastic model for the, the, um, the, model, the Generation 2, which we really like. As far as the adapters go, You'll see the adapters are different. Uh, the Generation 2, I mean, Generation 1 adapters will be almost uh, kind of service mount adapters. Um, you'll see they come with the Nemo 515 and the Nemo 1450 adapter here. Um, the Generation 2 will have uh, the same adapters uh, here, Nemo 550 and the Nemo 1450 here. Um, but they are you know, very, very different with regards to the actual adapter itself. Uh, and then apart from the obvious, uh, the big, uh, you know, kind of hoorah between the two is the Generation 1 mobile connector will have a power output of 40 amps continuous to the car, and the Generation 2 will actually have a power output of only 32 amps uh, to the car. Now, of course, the Generation 1 model uh, for the Tesla S and X, 
um, they would have the onboard charger of 40 amps or 80 amps. You can choose whether or not you want a single or a twin charger option there. Um, so the mobile connector actually maximized that onboard charger um, rate for the actual vehicle itself. So that 40 amps was really good to maximize that and give you, uh, you know, I think with the S, it was about 29 miles of range per hour with the X. Uh, it was probably somewhere around 23, uh, uh, I believe 20, maybe 25 miles of range per hour um, with the Model S. I mean, with the Model X. Now, uh, with the uh, version two uh, on the, the Model 3s, um, they just decided to do the lower average, um, just basically just kind of get away with all the overheating issues. But also, the Model 3 standard uh, range, you know, has an onboard charger of 32 amps. Um, so it would basically match up perfectly with that onboard charger, that 32 amp onboard charger that came with both the mid range and the standard range Model 3s. Uh, and of course, the long range Model 3s have, have an onboard charger of 48 amps. Um, which you could actually maximize, but that's using your mobile, uh, your wall connector. And so we'll have a separate video on Tesla wall connectors. But for the most part, that is the difference between the outputs on the actual Generation 1, Generation 2 mobile connector. Now, as far as the cabling goes, you'll notice the cabling is a, is, it's a little thicker for, for the Generation 1 uh, mobile connector, <clears throat> as opposed to, and this is the cladding-wise as well, so not only the cable, but it's the cladding that's, that's a lot thicker. Um, it, and then as far as the generation two, you'll see the cladding uh, and the cabling that's a little thinner. Again, the same 20 feet, uh, but uh, you know, six years of uh, prowess and engineering technology uh, that they put in this. It's, and, and of course the lower output definitely yields kind of a, a, a lighter and a thinner cable, which is really good. It's, it's better for maneuverability and uh, just overall uh, usage. Uh, and then as far as the weight goes, generation one weighs about six pounds. Generation two is roughly around 5.2 pounds. Um, as far as the neck goes on, on your actual um, connector here um, to your adapter, um, you'll see from your transformer to your connector here, it's about 11 inches from point to point. Um, whereas on the Generation 2, your connector here, once you put in the actual uh, adapter itself, it's about 7 inches uh, from point to actual transformer. So um, it does sit up a little higher, so that way you can see that in the status indicator light, which, which I really, really like. Um, and then as far as the weatherization between these two units, you'll have a NEMA 4X rating for your Generation 1 unit, whereas your Generation 2 uh, will have a NEMA 3R rating. Now, it's pretty much the same weatherized rating, uh, but I believe that uh, Generation 1 uh, is just a lot more, I guess, it's just built a little more robust, and so therefore it's able to withstand uh, a lot um, a lot higher temperature variances between, uh, uh, you know, the kind of the, the, the exterior elements uh, in the wild. And then as far as price goes, um, you are no longer able to purchase the uh, Generation 1 mobile connector online. I'm um, sure you can find, you know, several different versions out there on eBay and Craigslist, but for the most part, uh, this is no longer available online from Tesla's website. You can purchase the, <coughs> excuse me, the Generation 2 uh, mobile connector online from Tesla. They recently reduced their price uh, it's about 275, which is really good for the bundle. Um, now, keep in mind too that the bundle itself will only come with uh, the uh, generation. Uh, I guess the bundle itself used to come with uh, the NEMA 550, uh, 515, the NEMA 1450, as well as the J1772 adapter, um, and that all used to be here. Uh, but they recently reduced that price to 275, and what they did was they just basically excluded uh, the inclusion of the NEMA 1450 adapter. So just be careful when you're buying your mobile, uh, uh, I guess when you when you're, you have a, a newer uh, Tesla model um, from April of 2019 and, and beyond, they are no longer including the, the NEMA 1450 adapter on there. So just be, make sure that whenever you're, whatever outlet you actually have installed, that you're, you're, you're sizing and, and, and making sure you're purchasing the correct outlet for that, uh, that particular installation. So that's pretty much the similarities and some of the differences between the two. Now I want to go over some of the technology um, between the two, and I think this is a really interesting uh, part of uh, what I'm telling you guys today. Uh, as far as the uh, controllability, now if you notice, everything about Tesla is, it, it has to do when it comes to charging uh, is about controllability. They really want to be able to control uh, not only the internal but also the external power uh, elements uh, between the charging uh, sessions. And so. Um, the Generation 1 model here, um, Tesla knew that they, they really lacked controllability of the external power source. Um, and so uh, 
you'll see like the generation one adapters here, they have a small little transistor uh, inside the adapter. I'll go ahead and put a picture up here so you guys can see. Um, but as far as the transistor goes, uh, it's very, very simple math, uh, mathematical table that uh, is inside here that basically communicates with the mobile connector uh, to let it know, hey, this is a NEMO 1450 outlet. Go ahead and give me 40 amps continuous uh, you know, to this uh, mobile connector. Communicates with the car, car draws you know, 40 amps continuous based on what type of outlet, uh, maybe, sorry, what type of adapter you actually have connected to. So very simple pivot table uh, wise, and it's a you know, very simple calculation, uh, but that's pretty much all that the adapter has in it. It doesn't have any temperature control or, uh, or anything like that. So it's just a, a simple transistor uh, inside the adapter that tells the mobile connector what type of adapter uh, is connected, and therefore it, it, it knows exactly what type of draw to uh, present to the actual vehicle. So um, now uh, again, what you want to do is, uh, what we didn't like on the mobile, uh, the generation one mobile connector is the, the actual um, surface mount connection. Now you'll see when you plug this into the wall and it's sitting there hanging on your wall and it's got 20 feet of cabling in there, that connection here, um, the connection point right here between the adapter uh, and the, the connector itself, uh, over time it would start to wane. Uh, and it, it, I just, I never did like that. Um, so you have a, a kind of a poor connection here. You also have weak spring, you may have weak springs inside the actual external outlet itself. So you wanna make sure that um, when, you're, when you're plugging into the outlet that it's a real nice, firm, tight connection uh, when you're plugging in. Um, but again, you may have weak springs uh, inside your, your outlet. Um, you could have pitted or corroded uh, prongs on, on the adapter itself. So you definitely wanna check that, make sure that that's, uh, you know, that's all clear. Um, and then as far as the actual <coughs> control button, uh, you'll see in the generation one uh, control buttons here, um, you did have that that's kind of a small insertion right there where um, water would find its way through that. Um, and so just over time, uh, if any water gets inside the internal components up here, it's kind of a mother chip, uh, there's a, a motherboard right here inside this actual handle itself. Water gets into that, it corrodes all the, all the the actual layers in there and it's done. Um, so uh, that's for the actual connect. Now again, of course the handle is metal, so uh, we know that um, that's not good as we, we learn uh, later on, you know, when you have uh, the same current passing through less surface area um, where that connection is a little loose or you know, the prongs or, um, uh, or the actual connection, uh, the springs inside the, the, the outlet itself. Uh, anytime you have the same current passing through less surface area, you're just creating heat. Uh, and as a result, um, this being you know, kind of the stainless steel uh, metal, um, it, it's just a little, uh, it's just a lot more, uh, I guess, less tolerable that you can actually touch uh, um, you know, for, for those overheating issues. Uh, and then as far as the reset button goes, you do have a reset button on the back of this mobile connector, which is really nice. Any type of, uh, um, you know, kind of problems on the internal components of it, um, you just hold the reset button down for three to five seconds and uh, you should be able to reset it and it's good to go. Uh, if it doesn't uh, kind of fix the problem, um, then you kind of have to look at the external power source, uh, maybe the breaker, maybe the electric line, see if something's faulty on that, uh, or Tesla will just you know, kind of do their best to just keep you in the mobile connector. So again, generation one, all Tesla models between 2012, 2017, that's mainly the Tesla Model S and X, um, you do have the limited uh, adapter selection uh, with it, and then also you have the transistor inside the adapter um, that is basically kind of a power limiter. Um, and then you do not have any overheat protection um, uh, for the Generation 1 models, but you do have an internal GFCI protection inside of here, which is really good. You'll notice that um, you'll basically have uh, this installed and, and maybe you have an inspector out to the, to the home uh, and he says, oh no, this, this outlet has to have a, a, a GFCI breaker attached to it. Um, and you're like, no, 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 here's a user manual for this bad boy. You'll see that there is internal GFCI protection on it. So just a standard two pole, uh, 15 amp breaker uh, will do fine uh, for you know uh, your outlet um, because the internal the internal components of this mobile connector actually have GSCI the GSCI protection inside of it um, and then you'll also know that uh, for the generation one um, mobile connector that the uh, NEMA 1450 adapter did come with the mobile connector uh, as well as the NEMA 550 and the uh, J1772 connector adapter here um, now as far as the generation two. Uh, mobile connector. Tesla just wanted a lot more controllability um, over those exterior power sources that they just, they, you know, it wasn't in their control. So um, really cool. What they did was 
Um, of course, uh, with the uh, flush mount connection, they just offer a, a better, a tighter connection here, um, a better design, safer use, uh, of course. Um, now, something very interesting here is that they actually had uh, a uh, circuit board chip here. Now, the circuit board inside here, it's a little small chip here. Um, basically, the circuit board uh, has a uh, kind of a thermal temperature sensor here, as well as a memory chip inside. Now, uh, what that does is any type of heat variance that you know, comes from that exterior power source, uh, any type of indication of heat, um, Tesla, the, the adapter is actually going to go ahead and, and adjust that power and reduce the power as fast, almost instantaneously. Um, so that really helped avoid a lot of the overheating issues if it were to occur on the exterior power source wise. Um, and just allows Tesla to have a lot more control, uh, controllability inside there. You'll see that the uh, handle is uh, of that plastic material like we went over. Um, it's definitely heavily potted, uh, which, is, which is really good. It increases the weatherization inside the uh, connector itself. Um, that connector button, that, that kind of control button here is sealed. Um, so there's no chance of water getting inside that connector itself. And you know, for the most part, it doesn't have that reset button on the back of it. And Tesla just did that because the controllability that they would actually have between the, uh, the, the memory chip in here, they would be able to actually tap into uh, the vehicle logs and see what's wrong with the actual unit itself, um, how often uh, the, the interoperability, uh, I guess, uh, occurred uh, with the actual charging session itself. So they'll be able to tell you whether or not the issues with the actual adapter, the mobile connector, or the vehicle. Um, and so there's just a lot more controllability um, with that uh, interior serialized memory chip uh, inside the adapter here. And so I guess they just, they figured if, if that was the case, they, there was no need for a reset button there. Uh, again, the generation two, uh, as far as the mobile connector goes, is for all Tesla Model 3s, as well as every single Tesla Model S and X that was made from January 2018 forward. Um, and uh, it does have those temperature uh, sensors uh, that are able to reduce uh, the charging session instantly um, with the uh, actual adapters themselves, um, as well as the serialized memory chip. They do have the internal, uh, uh, internal GSEI protection here. So again, like we went over with the generation one, they do have that protection here with the generation two. Um, but unfortunately, um, some of the older gen twos uh, came with the Tesla uh, 1450 adapter, um, but as of April 2019, um, Tesla no longer included uh, the mobile, uh, I guess the, the NEMA 1450 uh, adapter. And so now the bundle package that you get from Tesla will only include the NEMA four, uh, 515 and the J1772 connector here. Um, but for the most part, that is pretty much it. That's the difference between the generation two, uh, one and generation two Tesla mobile connectors. I hope you learned a lot. I hope it was valuable for you. But again, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to comment uh, down below. I'll definitely do my best to go ahead and answer those questions as fast as I can for you. Um, uh, again, if, if you like the video, please sh like, share, subscribe, uh, and tune in uh, to our next video. Um, and uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. And until then, uh, cheers.